Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... For over 30 years, Vanguard Outdoors has made the gear that turns a regular hunt into another fine day of field. We know that a good shooting stick or a nice pair of binoculars can make or break your day. Our design teams include serious hunters who work hard to bring you the best sporting optics, shooting sticks, tripods, bags, and more. We are Vanguard Outdoors. Well, hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We have got a ton of brand new stuff on this week's show. We're gonna kick things off at a really cool turkey camp that Jordan was able to get to recently. And I was able to get out on Lake Michigan just a week or so back out of the port of Manistee. We heard they'd been catching some big kings and boy, were they right. You won't wanna miss that. And we're gonna have a salmon recipe for you as well. Lots of variety on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees, the sweet smell of nature's in the air, from the great lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream, it's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by, by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's destination since 1988, featuring varieties of homemade sausage, jerky, brats, and gourmet entrees. Holiday gift boxes can be assembled in-store or online. Details at CountrySmokeHouse.com. The Michigan Charter Boat Association has provided education of the Great Lakes fishery for over 52 years. Information about Great Lakes fishing opportunities as well as captain advocacy can be found at MichiganCharterBoats.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at GreenMarkEquipment.com. A couple of weeks back, I was able to spend some time at Turkey Camp near the town of Port Hope. For this segment, I'd be highlighting a couple of outdoor groups putting on a turkey hunt for veterans and first responders. That's a dead bird. <laughs> we are up here in the Thumb. We're at Turkey Camp, and the plan is we get here early on a Thursday. We pattern our guns and um, and we get out. Uh, tomorrow and hopefully get on some turkey as they cooperate with us. Tonight we're going to actually um, put together some food, grill up some salmon. Um, everybody hasn't met each other so I'd introduce everybody and uh, have a good time. This whole thing started off by Andrew and I connecting through a networking partner, through a member, about a year and a half ago. And so that networking partner said, hey, I love what you guys are doing at Network Outdoors. You need to meet this, this fellow who's part of this veterans group. He takes people outdoors and uh, that's all I know, so talk to him. So Andrew and I connected and uh, obviously hit it off and all we wanted to do is be a part of whatever he was gonna be doing. And what, what uh, this whole weekend came together was two first responders, two veterans, getting them outdoors. Some of them for the first time. And so this was an opportunity to get them out um, stress-free, have fun, couple days with Hotshot Outfitters, guided turkey hunting up in the Thumb of Michigan. Yes, sir. The plan for the morning was for me to tag along with our two veteran hunters, Andrew and Corey, with the other two hunters set up in a different location a few miles from us. We posted up on a small food plot where we saw tons of birds, just no turkeys. However, the other two hunters had some luck and their guide Gary was able to capture the whole thing on camera. 
Okay, one, two, three. This way. Get ready. I don't have a shot. You got your targets. Okay. Alright. I'm switching up a little. One, two, three. Yeah! <laughs> Dude, you guys just doubled up on two nice toms. You Let's guys did go. Perfect. Let's go. I didn't even hear your gun. <laughs> Dude. It, it's amazing what the outdoors does. It's uh, if, if you if you witness it yourself or experience it yourself, you understand. But um, I, I've always said anything I've ever done successfully was due to networking, meeting other people. Um, you get an opportunity to meet people that are interested in similar things to you, but maybe come at it from a different angle. And so the outdoors, putting on events and having hunting camps and fishing camps, you get to, uh, it, it's almost like an expedited friendship. And uh, people like doing business with people that they like, know, and trust, or who are like themselves, and you find a lot of that um, through these outdoor experiences. Network Outdoors is a group of business professionals, uh, outdoor enthusiasts all around the country. Specifically in Michigan, there's 10 chapters, and each one meets monthly for our uh, monthly meetup. We eat food, we network, and we break some clays at a, a local sportsman's shop. Aside from that, it's really important that we also pool together and we put on events to support nonprofits, either having to do with conservation, land, habitat, uh, new angler programs, um, new hunter programs, veterans, first responders. While the rest of us were busy eating lunch, Andrew was able to sneak out and fill his turkey tag, which meant three of the four tags had been filled. And while we were checking out his bird, we received a phone call that there were a few turkeys near the food plot where we had hunted earlier that day. So we loaded up our gear and headed that way. After about a half hour, we had three jakes work their way in, and by the time we saw them, they were well within range. morning we came out to the same location and um, the birds were regular um, didn't see anything though no no birds at all so we went back regrouped came back out um, little Intel told us that they were here so we came back out we snuck in and they seen us <laughs> so, but they didn't talk. they just went walking in the woods and then we just kept waiting. We were just about to, we were just talking about to leave. And all of a sudden I look out my window and here they come just walking right towards us, right where they were supposed to be at. And the back one was all by himself, all alone in the back. So he took him and I can't, did you he see him when they come out? 33 yards. 33 yards. As a veteran, um, being outdoors in general is therapeutic. It's just, it just is, it's therapeutic. 
no matter what you do outdoors, it's, it's just great. Um, so to be able to go to different fishing events, um, hunting events, different things like that, it's um, great because you got the camaraderie, which is is very important. And then being outdoors, and then the actual hunting itself or the fishing itself. Uh, very passionate about both hunting and fishing. Awesome. I love them very much. Um, I could do them every day if 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 I could get that my wife to to sign that, but <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. Anyway, um, it's just it's fun. It's a good time. We we live in America, and it's it's a you know our our freedom is due to a, a lot of individuals, um, and and. We owe it to, the least we can do is, is give back to those organizations that are helping our, uh, our veterans and first responders. So an important part of that is, uh, is, is allowing them to get out and be outdoors and enjoy what we love to do. Um, offer them experiences. So we, we put together deals with different outfitters like we are here up in the Thumb. And um, we, we put them up for you know two days, three days, whatever the trip is. and. Uh, we make some food, we uh, get to share stories, we, um, we all walk away as friends and it's, uh, it's, a, pretty, it's a pretty special deal. So yes, it's, it's helping veterans and first responders, but um, us in Network Outdoors, it's, uh, it's fulfilling to see somebody shoot their first turkey or, uh, or, or catch their first fish or personal best. Congratulations to all of the hunters in camp and thanks to everyone involved for letting me be a small part of it. What a great couple of days at Turkey Camp here in the Thumb of Michigan. Well, as you can see, they had a lot of fun at that turkey camp over on the east side of the state. We're going to now head to the west side of the state, to the port of Manistee. I'd been hearing all these stories about all these big kings that they're catching this spring, and so I wanted to go up there and check it out. And I tell you what, they were right. There was a lot of fish hitting off the port of Manistee. Well, it's, it's early early May. It's probably two weeks earlier than what we normally go out and seek out, out the kings, but they have arrived early this year, so we're gonna go out and try to get some fresh kings here. And they've been hitting pretty good? Yeah, the last last week I've never seen fish in, in 20 years this good this early. Really? Um, it's just, it's unbelievable. The, the light winter we had, in the warm temperatures, I think really had a big factor in the water temperature and where the bait and the kings moved this past winter. And I think they just set up and they never left. Huh. From the fall, they just stayed over all winter and they're, they're here. So we're gonna go out and see if we can, you know, get a, get a bunch of them in the box. We have had Lenny on our show a handful of times and it's usually worth getting to Manistee when he says the fishing is red hot. So that's what happened here. Lenny said, get up here if you can, and he was right. We had three fish on before we could even set all the lines. It was looking like the beginning of a good day on the water. Well, we have four on. We had a, actually five on, lost one. So we have a little chaos going on right now, but we're going to work it out. We're going to get them. <laughs> this one's at least three pounds. That one's at least 20 pounds. It's a nice one, but not, not as big because of that. Good fish. Nice fish. We got a fish here. We'll net this one. Behind drop here. Go ahead. Over tangle with this other diver. Okay. We'll I gotta go over you, Jeff. You're good. Oh, don't over. Just don't move in here for a second. Okay, that one's free. So we're going to have to start over here again. Walk backwards, Jace. All right, good job. Oh, good fish. Nice fish. Jace, it's a beauty! It's 
Jason's big fish, Jace. Also on board today was Jeff Bonin, Lenny's son Jace, and my wife Missy. We had solid non-stop fishing action so far this morning. Go ahead, drop your pole down, okay. and then walk backwards. Yeah, that's easier said than done. Yeah. I'll sit down if you have to. Yep. Drop the pole down to me. So, yep, okay. there we go. All right, awesome. Well, here we go. Fighting that same fish? Sure. No, this is the second one. Oh. Today we were using a new fly that Jeff from Rapture Flies created called the Sweet Pea, named after Mark. All our setups were the same fly today, all with a rotator, and they were hitting at every single depth. Another nice one. Beautiful. I'll go right in the middle there, Leonard. Holy cow! Jeez, good fish. Yes. Come out in the nut too. Look at that. That's a nice spring king there. That's dandy. Is that a four-year-old? Yeah, that's a four-year-old. Go. We all hope this kind of fishing stays like this all year long. We were basically straight out from Manistee, and with the structure off of the port of Manistee and Ludington, this kind of kingfishing is usually much later in the year. It's all bait fish related, and who knows if this will continue or the fish will move. But since you can't control it, the best thing to do is just enjoy it, and that's what we were doing so far today. Nice fish. Nice. Jeez. Good. Big fish. There we go. Okay. That's yeah. more like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a big fish. Yeah, it is. Nice Put up quite baby. a fight. <laughs> so with Missy on board, I was able to hand off the camera and reel in my first king of the year. How you doing there, Jimmy? Good. He just he just came to the surface here on the back. Well, he's, I don't know, 75 yards out, but I can see him now. A lot of fish this morning. I don't even know how many we've had on, but or how many we got in the box. But it's a box full. Yes, it is. Oh, there he goes. As we brought in fish after fish, I had Lenny explain a little bit about this new fly and how it came to be. Last year, um, and the show actually, Jeff was talking about a new fly he was going to probably kind of think about. You know, he was kind of like a scientist thinking about what he's going to do. Well, he came up with it, and his good friend Mark has been with him for a lot of years, and so Mark has never had a fly named after him, so Jeff named it after him. So it's the Peer Pressure Sweet Pea. I mean, can you imagine that? There's a big sweet story sweet behind pea. I'll, I'll tell you a big story. It's, it's, also part, it's also part of our series. The pot, we have Popeye spinach, Brutus, olive oil, now we have Sweet Pea. Okay. Named after this guy. All right, so He's back in the pee. day, there was a gentleman named uh, Kurt Mosier, and Kurt would always go to, to Jeff, you need to make a fly that's blue and green, <laughs> yeah. and you need to make it out of this material. Well, the material is really junk, and you catch two or three fish on it, and with the interior, Jeff was like, I'm not making it out of junk you material. Fish on over there, okay? There yeah. we go. Okay, well, I'm, I'm letting her get hers I'm closer. So I'm not making it out of junk material. So that fly never came to be, and all of a sudden, okay, there you are. Well, sometimes fish get in the way of a good story, but I think you get the gist. Mark and his rather famous peer pressure boat was the catalyst for this new sweet pea fly. And at least for today, well, it was performing like a champ. That's a good fly. And what's the rotator that you guys like to use? Um, I'm using salmon candy, eight inch. Um, he's got eight inch and 11 inch. I'm using the eight inch right now. So everything you see, are the eight inch today and we're running rot rotators on everything yep yep everything we got six rods six rotators okay so we're, we're, we're basically same flasher same fly we're just kind of keeping it simple today the fish are here and they like it so we're going to give it to them what will the fish be like over the next month or so well hopefully it's just like this but re realistically i mean what is it today the 8th of may 9th of may something like that we're really early the fish don't even usually show up until mid mid-May to the last week of May. So hopefully these fish stay around, you know, and, and don't go over to Wisconsin. It's all about the bait. If the bait stays here, hopefully the fish will stay here, so.
We were having quite a morning. I don't recall really any time when we didn't have a fish on. We were only going to fish for a few hours because really how many fish do you need? Of course, one of the conversations moved to salmon recipes and Mark had one that kind of scares me. I want to tell everybody something really my wife started doing. Three minutes, salmon in the microwave. Oh my goodness. What? I had some, yeah, I remember a couple of years back, well, more than a couple of years. Some of the guys on the dock in South Haven, she put it in there for three minutes, brought it out, and she had dill weed on it, salt and pepper. And they asked the guys on the dock if you want to try some salmon. They, I don't eat salmon. Okay, just try this. They tried it, no, no. How'd you do that? And so, yeah, and high for three minutes in the microwave. I will have to try the microwave salmon recipe just out of curiosity. It seems a bit odd, but if Mark Chimura says it's good, well, I'll have to trust him. We were about ready to call it a day, and I had Lenny give us a summary of our morning. We set lines at around 6 o'clock this morning. Uh, we had two to threes, four foot waves coming in the west, and um, we set up where I left the fish yesterday, and luckily they were there today. Um, we ended up having six fish on at one time, five fish that were physically on. And it was just one of those mornings where everything worked out good and we caught a lot of fish in a short time. Jace, he, he got into the action today. <laughs> you did. Mark even did, believe it or not. Yeah, everybody, everybody did. Everybody so got fish, yeah. It was great. It was a great morning for sure, and probably the best part is that Mark was able to join us today. Mark is back to fishing now after a few year battle with cancer, and to see him doing what he loves, well, it sure felt good and reminds us all how precious our time with friends and family really is. So get out and enjoy our great fishery. I know of at least one port that is holding some fish here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, as you can tell, we had a lot of fun on that fishing trip. I think we only fished for a couple of hours. The action was so hot and heavy. And I do have to try Mark's recipe at some point in time. I can't quite get over salmon in the microwave, but I'm gonna give that a shot. What we're gonna do right now is show you one of my favorite recipes, one of the ways that I really like to prepare salmon. It's on a pellet smoker, and it is something really good and easy, and tell you what, you're gonna love it. And what we're gonna do today is uh, smoke some salmon. Now, for me, when I like to smoke salmon, I really like the edges, so I have cut this into smaller strips, and uh, I almost like mine a little overdone, not really fish jerky, but somewhere between fish jerky and smoked fish, and we'll kind of show you that as we get going. But basically, to prepare this, I did a brine last night, and so I let it sit overnight. Probably, you probably want to at least let it sit about six hours, um, kind of up to you, and I used uh, one cup of salt, about a gallon of water, and then about a half to three quarter cup of brown sugar. That helps infuse the flavor. It really has helped with smoking fish a lot, so if you can, brine them overnight. Um, and what we're gonna do right now, we we're gonna get them right on the smoker at about 225. This is gonna take a couple hours, but this is just a simple, really good way to, uh, to get rid of some of the fish that you may have. And I've done this with uh, steelhead, lake trout, and salmon, and it works great for all of them. And so I just basically have a very simple um, uh, rub on here, just kind of an all-purpose rub. It had oh, sugar, salt, garlic, oregano, basil, paprika, just a, just a general thing here. We're gonna get these on the smoker right away, and then we're gonna baste about every half hour to an hour uh, with a mixture of both uh, whiskey and honey, both good by themselves, really good when they're together. Okay, well we are about ready to pull the fish off of the smoker. Uh, fish is done at about 145. Uh, we far surpassed that here, which I kind of wanted to do, because again, like I said, I kind of like my uh, smoked fish to be a little uh, crusty on the outside. These are pretty small pieces, and so they cook a little faster. We're about an hour and a half or so uh, into the cook, and we're past, they're for sure done, uh, just trying to crisp up a little bit. So we're gonna pull them off and give them a taste test. I think we're just gonna do our fingers here. Oh yeah, look at that, it comes apart really nice. Got that glaze on there from the honey. Mm. Really good. A little salty, a little sweet, perfect. Just a different way to smoke your fish. There's a lot of good recipes out there. If you have one you think we should try, send us that you know, either on Facebook, Instagram, or email us one of your recipes and maybe we'll try them on the smoker. This turned out great. 
Well, hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. If you missed part of this week's show or maybe last week's show, you can always check us out online. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. Lots of places you can be checking us out. Make sure you are joining us over the next several weeks. Lots of stuff happening around the great state of Michigan. Get out and enjoy it. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. Closed captioning brought to you by Double D Ranch Foundation, a nonprofit 501c3 foundation working to make hunting and fishing accessible for those with disabilities. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden Tail deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from, and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie, and back again. I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man A Michigan man When a system I say I I'm not.